Good morning. I want to invite our children up for a children's singing time real quick. And we'll go ahead and gather up over here together. All children are invited for children's singing time. Oh, you okay? You okay, buddy? Good. All kids invited. Jesus loves us. This body considers it such a delight to have you join us this morning, and we invite you to do so every chance you get. It's just a joy to have you here with us, and thank you for coming and being with us. Visitors, so we'll have a record of your visit, would you? Take a card and fill out the visitor side. They're located in the pew right in front of you. And pass it down to the aisle. Some young men will come by and pick those up a little later. And members, if you would do the same thing and remember members to circle the number that will be here for the meal Wednesday night on your card. Visitors, we do serve a meal here every Wednesday night at six o'clock, and you're so welcome to join us this Wednesday if you're still here in town. We'd love to have you. One announcement this morning, there will be no children's Bible hour today due to the different worship that we have. We think you will enjoy this morning's worship. We're going to hear from our group that went to Africa recently uh, on a mission trip, and uh, they're going to talk to you this morning. So we'll have no children's Bible hour. Let's go to our Lord in prayer. Father, it is such a joy, such an honor, such a privilege that you have given us to be able to come and to sing songs of praise to 
petition you in prayer to hear your word, to learn what is going on overseas, especially in Africa from the group this morning. What a privilege you have given us to do that. And Father, we serve you in every way that we can, and we love to do so because we know that you love us. Father, be with us this morning as we honor and praise your name. In Christ we pray. Amen. Let's stand together as we sing. There's a call comes ringing o'er the restless wave. Send the light, send the light. There are souls to rescue, there are souls to save. Send the light, send the light, send the light. The blessed gospel light, let it shine from shore to shore. Send the light, the blessed gospel light, let it shine forevermore. We have heard the Macedonian call today, send the light, send the light, and the golden offering at the cross we lay, send the light. Send the light, the blessed gospel light, let it shine from shore to shore. Send the light, the blessed gospel light, let it shine forevermore. Let us pray so, praise me everywhere. Oh. 
suffered on the cross for us to enable us to someday join him and and have everlasting life sometimes in everyday life it is so easy the things that we do on a regular basis that sometimes we take them for granted and sometimes we forget what the true meaning is and it's very hard sometimes with other things on our mind to concentrate even for a few seconds or a few minutes about what something stands for I was looking or or had a friend look up in the dictionary for me the definition of communion. And it gives four or five definitions, as Webster's tends to do with any word. And there's the mention of the bread and the wine and and how religious people partake of this to remember uh, that particular sacrifice. But there's two particular 
definitions there that I think are very, very important for us to keep in mind. One of them was that communion is an act or instance of sharing. An act or instance of sharing. Something that you share with somebody. The second definition, which I like even better, says that it is communion is an intimate fellowship or rapport. An intimate fellowship or rapport. Every Sunday as we do this, we should be thinking about that sacrifice that Christ paid for us, about the incredible love that God gave, as this mentions in John 3, 16, for God so loved the world that he gave his only begotten son that whoever should believe in him shall not perish but inherit eternal life. And as each one of us take this, as we take this collectively as a church, we give thanks and remembrance for what that sacrifice was and what it means to us. But also we should take just that moment to think about that intimate relationship that each one of us has with God and with Christ. So I challenge you today to, to clear your mind and think about those things as we partake of, of this sacrifice. Give thanks, please. Heavenly Father, we're so thankful for this day and the blessings of life you've given us. We're thankful for the gift of your Son that we may someday earn or be granted eternal life. Father, as we partake of this bread today that represents the body of our Lord and Savior Jesus Christ, we ask that we do so in a manner that will be pleasing and acceptable in our sight. We ask this blessing in the name of your Son, Jesus Christ. Amen. Let us pray again, please. Heavenly Father, we likewise give you thanks for this cup, the fruit of the vine, which represents to us the blood of our Lord and Savior, Jesus Christ. And we ask, Lord, that we do this and participate this in a manner that is well-pleasing in thy sight. In Christ's name we pray. Amen.
We also take this time every Sunday morning or the Lord's Day to reflect upon the gifts that God has given us. Of all the peoples of the earth, we are by far the most blessed with everything that we have, including monetarily. And that the good that we can do is to give back that portion uh, that can help the church and its growth, help others, and thank God for all the gifts that we receive. Let's pray as we approach it. Heavenly Father, we're thankful for all the blessings of life you've given us, and we ask that you keep us ever mindful of the fact that all blessings flow from you. Lord, help us examine our hearts and our minds, and let's give back a portion today of what has been given to us that we might further the cause of the church worldwide. Again, Father, thank you for everything. Forgive us of our sins. In Christ's name we pray. Amen. sing our song before the scripture reading and our sermon. There's a message true and glad for the sinful and the sad. Ring it out, ring it out. It will give them courage new. It will help them to be true. Ring it out.
Matthew chapter 28, verses 18 through 20. Then Jesus came to them and said, All authority in heaven and on earth has been given to me. Therefore, go and make disciples of all nations, baptizing them in the name of the Father and of the Son of the Son and of the Holy Spirit, and teaching them to obey everything I have commanded you. And surely I am with you always to the very end of the age. Good morning. This truly is an exciting morning, and uh, if you're visiting, as uh, Bobby mentioned earlier, you've honored us with your presence. We're glad that you're here, and we hope that you would come back and be with us any time that you possibly can. Uh, the reason why this Sunday is a little extra special to us is we are going to be having a presentation from uh, our youth, as they were privileged uh, not too long ago to have some mission experience on the continent of Africa. And we're going to be hearing a lot from them in that regard, and so I know you'll, you'll be blessed by that. In addition to this worship time, immediately following services, you can see in your bulletin that the Napier family is going to be presenting a portion of the a concert that they also did in several different locations throughout Africa. And so we'll be blessed to hearing many of the songs that Chad has written and uh, the words of those uh, are just so applicable to not only the mission effort, but in, even some of the stories that we find in Scripture that I'm going to be alluding to. You know, when you think about the church, when you think about the mission of the church, Bailey just read for us this passage in Matthew chapter 28, the Great Commission, and, and within that is the mission of the church to, to go to all the world, to go to all the world and, and spread the gospel. And when I think about this church, how seriously we take that commission locally and throughout the world, virtually everything that we do here, every program, every class, every gathering, every activity that we participate in has been designed for a purpose of putting us in an even better position to be able to share the gospel with those that are around us. And then to be able to have mission points where we support families, whether it's the Zapatas in Mexico or the Aprisionados in uh, uh, Pompano Beach, Florida, or whether it's Adams and his family in Ghana or West Africa, or whether it's the uh, orphanage in Bongo, or whether it's our young people going out on mission trips, or whether it's a Bible class that we're offering, or a sewing class, or a games day, or a pickleball opportunity, or food with kids, or feeding the teachers like we're going to be doing this next week, virtually everything that we do here, we do with this commission from God that has been given to us to be about the business of making disciples preaching the gospel to all the world. As a matter of fact, that very passage in Matthew 28 is uh, recorded in a little bit of a different way. In Mark chapter 16, verses 15 and 16, he said to them, go into all the world and preach the gospel to all creation. Whoever believes and is baptized will be saved. 
whoever does not believe will be condemned. And so that same commission given to us. And also think about the Macedonian call that Paul received. We sang about it in Send the Light. You have heard the Macedonian call today. That Macedonian call is recorded in Acts chapter 16. Beginning in verse 6, Paul and his companions traveled throughout all the region of Phrygia and Galatia, having been kept by the Holy Spirit from preaching the word in the province of Asia. And when they came to the border of Mycia, and they tried to enter into Bithynia, but the Spirit of Jesus would not allow them to do so, so they passed by Mycia, and they went down to Troas. And it was during the night Paul had received a vision of a man of Macedonia standing and begging him, Come over to Macedonia and help us. And after Paul had seen that vision, we got ready at once to leave for Macedonia, concluding that God had called us to preach the gospel to them. And so that great commission that the apostles heard in Matthew 28 and Mark chapter 16, Paul also had already received because he was on missionary journeys already, but now he received that very special Macedonian call to go and preach the gospel to them. You see, all this is in keeping with what Jesus had said back in Luke chapter 19 in that story of the little man named Zacchaeus. In verse 10 of Luke chapter 19, he said very clearly, the Son of Man has come for the purpose of seeking and saving the lost. Just file that story of this little man Zacchaeus away because in the Napier concert, they're going to be singing a song that Chad wrote about that, and that's going to be reminded, uh, we're going to be reminded of that, about becoming a new person, becoming a new person, which is what the gospel does for us. And so as I think about the young men you're going to be hearing from in just a few moments, Jacob Bearden is going to be sharing a, a brief devotional thought that he shared uh, in some of his travels, and then he'll talk a little bit about what this trip has meant to him. That'll be followed up with uh, Mark Napier doing a very similar thing, and then Chad Napier will give us some real insight into some of the accomplishments that we participated in in sending forth this team to the continent of Africa. Jacob, come on up and share with us your thoughts. I just want to start out by saying how thankful I am for this congregation. Without y'all, this trip probably wouldn't have been possible. And it's been a eye-opening and humbling experience that I'll probably, well, I, I don't want to say that. I will be going again soon. Not, maybe not soon, but I would love to. It's uh, an amazing experience that most people don't get the chance to do, but it's worth your, it's worth your time. And following that up, this was my uh, sermon that I did in Africa. Didn't have much time to think about it because I didn't give myself that much time, but I like it because it suits me and it's very, it's a good reminder. Uh, I don't know about y'all, but I love art. I'm an artist. I do all this artwork. Uh, I've done many different things. I've drawn, I've painted. Uh, never have I done the same thing that's always been different. It's I've taken my time on it. Whenever I do an art piece, I uh, make sure everything is just the way I want it. I like making things perfect, whether I'm sketching or painting. Something's missing, I'll put it in there. I'll make sure it's just right. I've never rushed through anything that I've worked on. I've always taken my time. I thought about it. I uh, made sure every line was perfect. And the thing about my artwork is there's always something even though it's not the same, there's always something that's unique about it, and that's me. I've put something of my uh, self into that artwork. And with God, that's the same way with us. This world was his creation. It's his artwork. We're his artwork. None of us are alike. 
We don't look alike. We don't talk alike. We don't think alike. We might be twins, but still, we're nothing alike. But I just want to let y'all know that God didn't rush whenever he thought about y'all. He took his time, made every one of y'all perfect, even me. Uh, he made us the way he wants us to be. And the thing about all of us that we do have in common is him. We all praise him, worship him, sing praises to him. And that's something that we all always have in common. Just like my artwork, everything that is in common is me. Everything in common with us is him. Thank you. Okay, so this trip to Africa for me was kind of a little bit of an experience that I had wanted to experience my whole life because this whole life I've been hearing stories about all these people from my grandpa and my grandma, Zonke, Romano, Dimpo, Machona, and I always wanted to go over and meet them. So this trip kind of made that possible. And I'd also like to thank you, like Jacob did, because this wouldn't have been possible without you. So, and the people over there, this is to go with my sermon. The people over there treat you like family. They open up their homes to you, and it's really amazing what they do. And anyway, so we tend to define people by their differences as in they're smart or they're athletic or, yeah. And people did the same thing, like he's a Hebrew or he's a Gentile. Focusing on these differences tend to divide us. When we define someone by their difference from us, we feel uncomfortable around them. Defining by differences is society's way of creating distance. We don't want to get close to someone who's not like us. I'd like to read a verse from Ephesians chapter 2, from verses 19 through 22. Consequently, you are no longer foreigners and strangers, but fellow citizens with God's people and also members of his household built on the foundation of the apostles and prophets. With Christ Jesus himself as the chief cornerstone, in him the whole building is joined together and rises to become a holy temple in the Lord. And in him you too are being built together to become a dwelling in which Christ lives by his spirit. This kind of relates to how the people in Africa, they were nothing like us, but yet they welcomed us as if we were one of them. And these differences are real, but Jesus, for Jesus' followers, they no longer matter. When Jesus died for our sins, he broke down the barriers that society puts up between groups of people. He did it by making all Christians fellow Christians with God's people, and also members of his household. What we have in common with other Christians, instead of following the world's, we need to emphasize on what we have in common with other Christians, instead of following the world's approach of emphasizing differences. We no longer see if they're smart or they're athletic, but we see them as a brother or sister in Christ, someone to care about, and to worship with, someone to draw close to, and to be a friend. Thank you. All right. Proud of those young men. I'm also proud of uh, Bailey. Uh, Napier, who went with us on that trip, and also my mother, and um, we just had a wonderful time. 
and uh, had a lot of great opportunities for service. And I believe that this has just been a life-changing experience. We had several from our congregation go together, including my family and Jacob and my mother. And we also went along with a nice group uh, from, from Benton. And uh, I just want to share with you this morning uh, a few photographs and, and uh, tell you a little bit of what we did while we were there and to say thank you for helping all of these things uh, happen. Thank you. Before we went, three of our group went up early. Uh, on the far left there is Larry Meadows. He's a man I grew up with from uh, maybe went from when I was about five or six or seven years old. And he uh, is a member of the church in Mount Carmel, Illinois, where I lived in grade school. And he went ahead with us and my mom and uh, Diane Napier and then Christy Evans as well. They went up and kind of prepared things and got them ready, went up uh, two or three weeks before we went and were there for a good long period getting ready. I want to ask you right now to remember the fellow on the far left, Larry, uh, in your prayers. He's a good man. While we were there, um, he had the choice of staying over in a hotel or staying in this, in this uh, sleeping room with a couple of beds and all of us around on uh, pads on the ground and Larry didn't want to go off to do that. He, he changed his uh, arrangements so he could stay with me and the boys and grew, build a relationship with us all week. But Larry has since gone home and had a stroke and um, he is uh, doing a little better now but does have uh, some difficulty and he's 100% blocked on one of his carotid arteries and has had a couple of heart attacks previously, uh, but he has uh, not felt that he's done serving the Lord, and he worked uh, the whole time he was in Africa. He laid tile, he painted, he um, excellent man. Uh, please keep Larry in your prayers, but he was a great encouragement. And my mother and Christy went and got all our arrangements and our place we were staying ready for us to stay and taught uh, a lot of the women and and Larry taught in the short term school as uh, with the the students that are there <clears throat> in Namibia in Sumeb. Uh, here we are at the airport and getting ready to to take off and and to go. We're a rough looking group, aren't we? <laughs> um, and uh, but uh, what a what a enjoyable time for all of us being together and the three who were already there. And my dad is there seeing us off. He wished he could go, but he at least got to go give us a send-off. Um, we weren't there very long before um, we had a worship service. There were three worship services going on Sunday morning that some of us went to. Joel went to to one suburb of Pretoria, and we stayed at, at the downtown, and then Dempo, I'll show you some pictures in a little bit, who, Dempo, who spoke here last year, um, he has built a little room on the side of his home and has planted a church in a, in a new neighborhood, uh, and they're, they're meeting in this room on the side of his home, and, uh, but Jacob was with us at the downtown church where uh, we were there and I was preaching and we sang after church like we're going to just a few songs uh, the, this morning. And then uh, we see Jacob here uh, um, overseeing, handling the communion being served in that service and where he gave a talk and, and, uh, and I had a lot of, saw Jacob Bearden really grow uh, in the Lord that week. Uh, th those three weeks that we were gone in leadership and his willingness to do anything that he was asked. Uh, you see a, a little classroom they have and some teaching that I did on um, the book of Revelation there that they had, that's what they asked me to teach on. Luckily I had taught that here recently and, um, and uh, so uh, they have these students that come in from all over the country. This is in South Africa. Uh, but they come in for a three or four or a week period or a six week period much of the time and they are um, they're just uh, getting a, a deeper look at God's word so that they can go back and be more effective as members 
and uh, some of them will become preachers or or uh, teachers in other ways, but they are, uh, have uh, these short-term schools where after they baptize you, they don't want just to, uh, to leave you there. And so uh, a lot of them are given the opportunity to come and to study for six weeks and to, to gain a lot of training and strengthen the local congregations that have been planted. See all these kids. Uh, at the very back, we have Brenda and Sydney. Um, they're a little bit lighter skinned back there. You can probably notice them. Uh, but they, they are um, uh, there with these children that we love so much. And uh, uh, that's them handling Bible hour and, and children's Bible class at one point that first Sunday morning that we were there. Uh, Houston, one of the young men, he has spoke here. And this is the little room that Dimpo has built on the side of his home and we see Houston preaching that Sunday morning uh, to this small group of Christians that are starting in that neighborhood and doing well. Uh, my family gathered up at one point in the afternoon to sing, uh, do a little singing and uh, as, our, as our quartet. and had a lot of opportunities to do that everywhere we went, in public and in private settings. Um, here we are outside the front of the church building, um, uh, and right uh, in the front with the leather jacket and the red shirt um, uh, is a young man, who Machona, who has been here and spoke as well about two years ago, and um, uh, he was a great help to us. You can see on the left with the white beard, uh, they're pretty mesmerized with that white hair and white beard in Africa. Uh, when they see Joe come, uh, they've, I've heard him called the great white one and all kinds of things. But uh, Joel is the preacher over at Lawson Road in Little Rock. And uh, he had a lot, of our, some, a lot of our young people over last week presenting at their congregation uh, what they did. But Joel was a, a help to us as well. There in that little room, uh, that new church plant, that's not during a service. That's just sitting there visiting and looking at what they have done. Um, after we have spent a few days uh, in um, South Africa and Pretoria, while we were there, we had a youth rally, a youth gathering. We had a World Bible School seminar um, uh, where we came and they recruited students and we sang and we taught and, and uh, we had uh, lots of different events like that. And we stayed in homes of the members. Uh, three different homes housed our group, and uh, we had the chance to stay with those members of the congregation and grow close to them, and it was a wonderful time. Now we're getting to the airport, and uh, we have flown now from South Africa to Namibia, and uh, we are about four hours drive from Sumeb uh, that is up north, and we're heading there. Uh, uh, and, and getting ready, to, we've rented two white vans, and uh, <clears throat> we are going to make that trip to where we're going to spend most of our time up there in Sumeb. Immediately as we get there, uh, they have been studying with these students, and uh, I had an opportunity to be in two or three stu studies, and Brenda as well and many others in the group and we begin to have baptisms and um, and studies there and you can see the, the the portable baptistry that has come down out of the chariot that we could use which was very convenient what whatever activity we were at and uh, uh, here we've had uh, a few young, young ladies and young men who are students there uh, in total while we were there there were seven uh, baptisms uh, with our group, uh, with our folks uh, there, and uh, we were able to take part in some of those studies as well as the Africans themselves uh, performing some of those as well. And uh, here we have Jacob visiting with one of the students who was there for six weeks to study and a friend that he had made. Um, here we have Jacob. Uh, every morning, a different one of our boys would give the for those three weeks would give a, the morning devotional. And they all had several opportunities. I believe that's Jacob giving one of his, and uh, um, 
getting to uh, visit together and challenge each other in the morning to have the right attitudes and to look at scripture and the students joined us in those devotionals and the singing was wonderful. Here we are our first night out in Sumeb at the, at the city park and we are there and I have the teens are up singing kind of action VBS type songs with a lot of kids. We had a three night uh, children's uh, activity, VBS type activity that went on each day. And uh, during the day, we were walking around our town and visiting with people on the streets and in houses and going door to door as groups and inviting children and people. And uh, later on, in the, uh, at night, we had evening services. And then at the end of the week, we were having a big youth rally where we were going to feed uh, uh, those who came and, um, and the, the young people spent the day playing with children, canvassing the neighborhood, uh, working, setting up the tent. You'll see a lot of those things, but you'll see a lot of children gathered uh, for Bible classes and activities that we were having under the tent. One day when we had the youth rally, we fed uh, 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 on short notice, but here you see the group making sandwiches and uh, filling lunch bags and, uh, and working. Uh, this is a little uh, room that, we, that our girls stayed in there that they're working in. Um, but uh, every day there was a lot of work to do to help the kids or to put on an activity and our teens did a great job, and our adults did a great job leading them. Uh, here we have Joel, and this is Lawrence, the preacher at Sumeb. And uh, Lawrence is a wonderful man, helped drive us back. Uh, uh, there were more of us coming back all together than came, because we came in two groups. And uh, so we could all have seats. He even followed us back to the airport for that long trek carrying all the luggage in the gospel chariot so we could all have seats and seat belts to sit in on our journey. But a uh, wonderful man and his family. Uh, we have uh, different kids on the campaign spending time and building relationships throughout the day. And you see these uh, beautiful children and uh, their, their joy and happiness to be a part of what was going on and willingness to learn about Jesus this is the preacher's um, uh, daughter that um, became uh, so close to all of our kids. Y'all remember her name? Ernestine. And uh, she was uh, uh, just a wonderful joy. And I'm going to show you another picture of Ernestine at the end uh, uh, that uh, will be great. Uh, this is a young man named Zonke. That, uh, that helped us very much. Uh, he is one of the ministers there now. You know, Dempo has moved on to plant this new congregation in another part of Pretoria area. And Zonke is, is one that has kind of been uh, raised up and trained to be a leader. And he is one of the ministers there, works very much with the youth. But he was right by our side everywhere, helping us watch out for the kids driving us around and he was a wonderful blessing and a wonderful encouraging young man for our youth to be around. Uh, there's me preaching under the tent in an evening and uh, talking uh, with uh, folks that are there about the gospel message. This is the part, you saw that nice room uh, that they were sitting in built next to uh, Dempo's house but here's the outside and they build these uh, brick structures like this and then plaster them. And, but all that construction is still going on. But they, they have uh, finished uh, the inside for worship uh, uh, first so that uh, I think they're more concerned about the, the church than getting their house done. And they are doing a wonderful job. You can see some of the work that's going on there. Um, after we have worked and served and, and done all of those uh, activities throughout the week, uh, it is time to go uh, to Windhook, back to Windhook. And uh, we sent our luggage uh, on, 
and um, we are, I'm, I'm sorry, we're, we're getting ready to go uh, to Namibia in this picture, but this is us riding a train for one la uh, lap of our trip. Uh, and, uh, beautiful, uh, they call this train the, the pride of, uh, of South Africa because it was a, a, a beautiful uh, um, uh, train. You're not allowed to chew gum. You're not allowed to eat anything. Um, um, they've, they've kept it very professional in nature, and they're very proud of it. Jacob Bearden, I just wanted to show you um, the whole time we were in Namibia, his great sense of fashion with his fanny pack that was, uh, that was always with him. And uh, he was uh, very proud of his fanny pack, and I just didn't want to not have a picture of that. <clears throat> Uh, we see my mother, uh, um, my mother and the ladies about every evening cooked in the little room that where we were staying and fed us. And a lot, I'm so thankful for my mom and all the hard work that she did uh, feeding uh, all about 15 or 17 of us depending on the time that she would feed us and then a few of the workers from out of town or somewhere else would show up and also one day a nearby orphanage came and visited and my mom and ladies and the teens worked and uh, fed all of the children from the children's home and uh, she, my mother did a whole lot of work in cooking and serving the group while we were there and Christy in the back helping her and all of the other ladies and Janet one of the things we did, there's a wall around um, the, the school and the church building in Sumeb. This is not your normal Africa gospel chariot campaign. Namibia is one of the more undeveloped areas as far as the church. And um, it, it's, it's harder to, uh, to get things off the ground and harder to get things done there. But what we do have in Namibia is this wonderful donated resource of... Uh, of this school, this short-term school that has been donated uh, to Gospel Chariot, and it has needed a lot of work. And you can see our youth working uh, for a good amount of time all around the perimeter, uh, brushing off and sanding and scraping and painting the exterior, along with some of the students helping them uh, from the short-term school. But. Uh, you can, uh, mom and dads, this is proof that they know how to do this kind of labor. And uh, they'd be glad to be out in the yard for you tomorrow. <clears throat> but um, you can see uh, the, 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 length of, the length of that going around the property and the, and the work that, that, that they put in. And uh, cleaning it and scrubbing it and trying to do it right. You see a finished picture here. It's a little dim, but doesn't, doesn't that look nice? And uh, uh, painted the posts one color and the wall one color. And it's all completely uh, well done. And they did a great job working on that. Um, the kids worked hard and, and did that work very quickly. Um, <clears throat> here... Uh, uh, Mark and, and uh, some of our folks from Benton are there helping uh, plant a coconut tree and they've been planting, I'm, I'm sorry, not a banana tree. Um, some, of the, some of the things that would help the students around the area there. And um, gathering up with uh, special students that they really built relationships with. And, um, and so I put a couple of pictures in here uh, double, didn't I? It, just because I like them. Here, um, ba Bailey is helping um, uh, the, the women there in Africa. She's making pop, which is their standard meal. That I just read Nelson Mandela's autobiography, and uh, that was what he ate for about every meal in prison was was pop and it's kind of a mealy meal or kind of like a almost like a grits it's very inexpensive and it's what most families have to eat for most meals um, the family I was staying with uh, he had become a lawyer and his wife um, was a dentist and and they were very successful in in regard to uh, where they were but he had uh, growing up he said that uh, his family ate pop three meals a day 
That's what they ate growing up. And, but Bailey is there working and making that, and, and uh, we got to eat that one evening. It was very, uh, very good the way they prepared it. These three young ladies are three young ladies that I was able to baptize while I was there. Uh, others did some study. The two young ladies, I did a, a follow-up study toward the end before they were baptized, but a lot of the workers there had been studying with them. And then about three days later, these two young ladies came with this young lady from local from Sumeb and said she would like to study the Bible and learn about God as well. And I was privileged to be able to study with her, the, the young lady in the middle. And uh, just great to see these young people giving their lives to Christ and uh, hoping that they will strengthen the church there in Sumeb. And we see... Um, more baptisms and uh, they were given a baptism certificate and they were very proud uh, uh, of, of that but these are four of the young ladies that were baptized while we were there and were in the school at different times there's been giving a devotional more cooking um, this little young lady, um, there are more pictures of her than uh, that on everyone's camera but she is Lawrence's youngest uh, Emmy and uh, such a beautiful child that everyone took turns holding and hardly ever left her alone for about three weeks. Um, at at uh, one of the events we passed out the strings and did the story of the Bible with string figures and the children uh, uh, spent hours playing with those strings and, and trying to make those figures and talk about that story with us. He made a real activity for us to be able to gather up with them and sit down with them and talk. There's Mark uh, speaking in Sumeb. Uh, our singing group gave out uh, almost all of our CDs. Uh, through many of you buying CDs, we, we were able to purchase a bunch more and, and uh, gave out hundreds of those uh, for free everywhere we went. And the people and the children, the young teens especially, were thrilled to get them and to be able to have those to, to play. Um, there's uh, one of our young men, Houston, preaching in the park. And... Uh, Jacob and Larry encouraging a student, more students of the boys uh, showing us that they had gotten a CD and, and uh, these children are just so um, innocent and loving and, and willing to come and hear about Jesus. It's a beautiful thing. Um, at the end of the week, we got to participate. After six weeks, the students are given a graduation I'm sorry, six months, I'm sorry, are given a graduation ceremony. And uh, uh, they are very proud to get those certificates from all the Bible training. And I saw a list of all the coursework that they went through, and it was impressive. Uh, and uh, as you teach these students, they have pen and paper, and they are writing down nearly every word you say, and they are attentive. I would teach for two or three hours at a time, and when I would get done, um, they were not done wanting uh, to have material. And uh, very impressive, the hunger for the word that many of them have. <clears throat> At the end of the trip, we came back to uh, Windhoek, Namibia, and here uh, I'm preaching at, at one of the congregations there in Namibia, but uh, we were able to visit with uh, several Christians while we were there and fellowship and sing and uh, have a wonderful time. Uh, this is an overlook uh, that we took uh, at, at a high point at Namibia in the in the um, in uh, Windhoek, the big modern beautiful city that is, and then Sumeb um, was a very small rural deserty uh, type of area that we had had been in. But you can see the size and the and the variety of the areas we were in in Namibia. Here, these uh, three young people. On the far left, you see Ernestine, who was the daughter of the preacher. 
that we saw a picture hanging out with Bailey and others. And uh, Ernestine, right after we left, decided she was ready to become a Christian. And also two other people from the community. Uh, the young man on the right is one of the students uh, that I remember. And um, just so thrilled that they're continuing to have success and results. And uh, I want to let you know that um, uh, those of you that gave and you're giving, I, I believe that you've taken part in people becoming Christians and the church being encouraged and strengthened in this place where it really needs to be strengthened. And, it, and Namibia needs to be strengthened as well because it is a great entrance point to some of the other countries that they're getting ready to work in. And there are some countries in the area that won't let South Africans in, but they will let Namibians in. And so Namibia needs to be strengthened for the overall health, not only of Namibia, but for the continent. And so uh, I hope that you'll be in prayer for that and be excited about uh, God changing lives uh, through your giving and through your efforts. I also want you to know that uh, Gospel Chariot has now sent a worker from the north, I believe, who is going to be there for several months now, who has been a church planter um, in the north uh, of, um, of Namibia and now is um, going to be there helping and working along with Lawrence and uh, strengthening and doing follow-up and uh, caring that the results continue from what was gone while, what, going on while we were there. And so as we have left, more help has arrived and is going to be there for an extended period of time to nurture and care for these new Christians. And uh, isn't that exciting? Would you give our young people a hand for the good things that they have done? Thank you for being willing to listen for a few more minutes. And uh, at this point, we want to extend the Lord's invitation. Um, in Matthew 28, where Jesus gives the Great Commission, it says that 11, the 11 disciples after Judas' death gathered up and, and uh, they, they saw Jesus. And it says they worshipped Him, but some of them doubted. And I've always wondered, what, what did they doubt? You know, they'd walked along with him and been with him. Did they doubt his miracles? I, I don't think so. They had, I think they believed those were real. They, they'd seen those right in front of their face. And, you know, did they doubt his resurrection? I don't think so. They, he was there and they could touch him and feel his side. But, you know, they had misunderstood the nature of the kingdom sometimes that Jesus was building. And I, I think maybe, I don't know, but maybe they just were struggling with, you know, why did Jesus really have to die? And where do we go from here? And in this difficult time for them, Jesus gave them what every one of us needs, and that's a purpose. And He told them to go into all the world and to preach the gospel, baptizing them in the name of the Father and the Son and the Holy Spirit and teaching them to obey everything I have commanded you. And He promised that He would be with them always. The power of the gospel is for all people. And it is offered to you and me. And if you're here this morning and you need to talk about becoming a Christian, if you'd like to be baptized into Christ, or if you would like to rededicate your life to Jesus, we give you that opportunity. Please come. There'll be elders in the back and a shepherd down here with me in the front. If you have any need, please come together as we stand and we sing. Would you be poured out like wine upon the altar for me? Would you be broken like bread to feed the hungry? Would you be so one with me that you would do just as I will? Would you be the light and life and love my word fulfill? Yes, I'll be poured out like wine upon the altar for you. Yes, I'll be broken like bread to feed the hungry. 
ends, I'll be someone in you that I may do just as you will. Yes, I'll be a light and life and love your word for Jacob, Mark, and Chad, thank you so much for presenting just a little portion of what you did. This congregation knows well that it takes a lot of work to get through a trip like this. And you always have stumbling blocks of different kinds, and we just appreciate your endurance and your patience doing the work and enduring the stumbling blocks that come your way to be an encouragement to these people that you confronted. Thank you so much. Also, you may not know Mark next weekend will be moving to Oklahoma where he will attend Oklahoma Christian University and beginning a new phase in his growth in his spirituality and his adult. And Mark, this congregation just wishes you the best. And along with that always comes a challenge. And Mark, we challenge you to be a light shining for Jesus Christ. And I got to thinking, not just a light, but an LED light. You know, an LED light is a whole lot brighter than a normal light. And not only that, it's kind of like the Everetti battery. It just keeps on going and going and going and doesn't burn out. So Mark, we wish you the best. A couple of announcements uh, lately that's not in the bulletin. Uh, you probably saw Sharon's email of where uh, Denver and Caitlin's newborn child, Audrey Anna, uh, is doing better, and she is doing better. But also, I talked to Ann Sweet late yesterday, and Ann says, they're continuing to run tests on Audriana and that there might be a possibility or a necessity to have surgery, uh, that she might have surgery. That, has, that is undetermined at this time. And again, they're running more tests. So keep, uh, keep that newborn baby in your prayers, please. Also, Dot Ramsey is at home and very weak, along with Bill. So please keep Bill and Dot Ramsey in your prayers. And to keep Larry, as Chad informed us, that was on this trip who had the stroke. Let's, let's keep all of these in our prayers. I'm going to lead us in a closing prayer afterwards. Please stand for a closing song. And if you can and have not made other arrangements, I think you will thoroughly enjoy, after the closing song, uh, the Napier family will sing the songs that they presented in Africa. If you have other obligations, that's understandable. And uh, But if you can, please, uh, please, I think you will really enjoy that singing. Let's go to our Lord in prayer. Father, again, we just uh, look at you. We praise your name. We honor you. And Father, we uh, know that in this life we hurt and we have problems, but Father, your blessings are just absolutely too numerous to count, and we just thank you for that. We thank you for the love of Jesus Christ in whom we have hope for eternity. And Father, be with each of us as we go into this new week and begin this new week today, and guard us and keep us with you. In Christ's name we pray, amen. Will you stand?
God bless, thank you. And we'll sing in just a moment.